The second example is image rotation. We know that we have uh, the opportunity to process different images and oftentimes we want to rotate the image. Like in this example, we have a very cute cat and we have its original image on the left and on the right, uh, we have a rotated image of the original one and we're rotating uh, counterclockwise for 45 degrees. So this is a good example of uh, image rotation uh, we're looking at. So let's just uh, take a look at the uh, rotation and how it actually works. Uh, there is a math behind the rotation operation. We know that each pixel in the picture has its coordinates. And the pixel represents the you know, grayscale or color scale as a part of the image. For the rotation, we actually move the pixels around. Uh, and to be more specific, if we're talking about to rotate a point at uh, x1 and y1, uh, around a uh, origin uh, coordinates x0 and y0. Uh, now the new location of this pixel is x2 and y2. And if we're um, using a formula to represent the new location, uh, considering the rotation angle, and here's the formula we're going to use. So the x2, the new x coordinates of this pixel, will be cosine theta. Uh, times x1 minus x0 plus sine theta uh, multiplied with y1 minus y0. Similarly, we have a formula to calculate the new location, the new coordinates on the y dimension for this uh, pixel. And it will be minus sine theta multiplied with x1 minus x0 plus cosine theta uh, multiplied with y1 minus y0. Now, if we are rotating, let's say, uh, around the origin 0, 0, and typically you are talking about the uh, upper left uh, corner of the image, if that's the case, then this x0, y0 becomes uh, all zeros. Then the new location of this pixel will be uh, in using uh, these two formula to calculate. As we see here, um, the new location is really uh, what we are trying to find out. And uh, to rotate this image, we're actually uh, going to copy the pixel information from the original location x1 and y1 to the new location x2 and y2. And during this calculation, uh, the new coordinates on x dimension and y dimension can be calculated independently. As you can see, there's no dependencies uh, between uh, x1 with uh, y2 or y1 with y2. And we can uh, group, well, we can think about a very uh, simple and intuitive way to uh, parallelize these uh, operations. Uh, to be more specific, we can assign each work item to calculate the new position of a single pixel. So for all the pixels in the original picture, we're going to calculate the new location of that pixel and then assign the uh, pixel information to the new location. And for each work item, we can obtain the location of the pixel using its global ID. And that's how we can uh, initialize the uh, dimensions and work group size before we instantiate the kernel. Now we want to look at uh, exactly how we're going to uh, break down this image rotation problem into smaller ones, uh, into these work groups and the work items. So here we are using what's called input decomposition. We mentioned earlier that we're going to use each work item to calculate the new position of a single pixel. So the question is how we're going to divide the uh, a whole global uh, workspace into smaller work groups, and each work group contains some number of work items. Uh, we show here, uh, this is a, a representation of the uh, original image, and we can divide the image, uh, all the pixels, into different work groups. And we're using two dimension uh, compute domain to address this problem. That is to say, 
while dividing uh, on the horizontal domain or the, the width domain uh, and in this case we're dividing that into uh, 16 work groups so if the whole uh, width of this image is W then we're gonna have W over 16 work groups on the horizontal dimension and we have assumption here this W is a multiple of 16 so we uh, don't end up uh, with a fractional number and on this x dimension, on the horizontal dimension, uh, we can see that we can have work group 0, 1, 2, and so on, up to uh, w over 16 minus 1. So altogether, we have w over 16 work groups at the uh, horizontal dimension. We can divide the vertical dimension uh, into uh, work groups also. And uh, assuming that the um, assuming that the height of the image is h, and then we also divide uh, the whole vertical dimension into sixteen work groups. So now we have work group zero, one, and so on, up to this uh, h over sixteen minus one. This w should be uh, h. Um, so this is how we're gonna divide uh, the whole picture into work groups. Now let's look at the kernel function that we can use to implement such operation. We define a kernel function um, so we can see that we begin with this keyword underscore underscore kernel. Uh, the type of this kernel function or any kernel function is a void and the name of the function is image underscore rotate. It takes a few arguments. Uh, the first is the pointer to the global buffer and the destination data is where we store the image after rotation. The second argument is uh, a pointer to the global buffer or global memory and the um, this is the original image. We also provide the uh, width of the original image and height of the original image, the image dimensions. The fifth and sixth arguments to this kernel function are the rotation parameters, uh, basically the sine theta and the cosine theta we pass into this kernel function. Let's look at now the body of this kernel function. At the beginning, we would like to identify this work item. And essentially, we are trying to figure out what is the original location of this pixel. And we know that we need to go through every single pixel uh, in the image. So we'll use this get global ID dimension zero and get global ID dimension one to essentially get the coordinate of this original pixel. So this ix and iy is the uh, coordinates of this pixel. What we want to do here is we would like to calculate the new location of this pixel in the rotated image. Uh, uh, you, you can recall that we have uh, formulas to calculate y2 and x2 and this is where we can apply those two formulas to calculate the new location of this image using the um, uh, rotation parameters. So what we have here is this ix, iy is the original coordinates of the sing single pixel and this x position and y position are the new coordinates of this single pixel. So the next few lines, what we're about to do is to copy the information of this pixel, being either grayscale or color scale. So we're going to copy that content, the um, information of this pixel, from the original location to the new location. Before we do that, we actually have to do one more thing. We have to do bond checking. Uh, because the way we do the rotation and it depends on which uh, coordinates we sh choose to use as the origin and we will end up having in some cases the new location uh, the new coordinates will be out of the bound boundary of the original image so this is what we have to do here to make sure that the new location the new coordinates uh, actually uh, fall into the uh, original image size. 
So we're going to check whether uh, the x coordinates is greater or equal to zero, and uh, this x coordinate is uh, within the width of the picture. Similarly, we check the uh, y coordinates to make sure it is a positive value, and also it's within the height of the image. If that's the case, then we'll just uh, you know copy the pixel information from the original location to the new location. And uh, we'll have to do a little bit calculation here since you know the physical memory stores data in all the linear address space. So we will have to use the coordinates to calculate the location of the pixel in the physical memory. So we'll use this uh, y, which is the uh, row number, and we will multiply with this width of the image, then plus x. And we do the same for the uh, original pixel and the new location of the pixel. And here we used that location to read the uh, information of this pixel and assign that to the new location in the rotated image. Here we uh, list the complete code. You may notice there is a difference between this uh, example and the previous example of matrix multiplication. Mainly is that we have this C++ binding uh, in the host side application. You can see that we're using C++ uh, naming uh, convention to say that we want to create a vector of platforms and we have the functions to uh, call to retrieve IDs of these platforms and we'll create uh, you know, context, uh, create a, a command queue. So all these are a little bit different from what we uh, used in the previous exa example. Even though this implementation is based on C++ binding for the OpenCL APIs, uh, these steps are essentially the same. So we first set up the environment to query the platforms, uh, query the device, and then we create a command queue. Then we declare buffers to move data, uh, move the initial image from the host memory to the buffer on the device. This is where you can see that we can have this uh, read-only buffer created. That's the image that's to be rotated. And also we have this in queue write buffer to copy the original image into this um, image buffer. And then we will uh, need to compile the kernel. We read in the program source. Uh, we will create the program object, and then we'll create the kernel. And then we will execute the kernel by in instantiating uh, the correct parameters and also ND range parameters. Uh, as you can see here, we calculate the cosine and sine value using the rotation angle and we'll set the kernel arguments uh, in the right order. So we'll initialize the uh, destination um, buffer uh, and also the source buffer on the device side to store the new image and the original image. We'll supply the uh, dimensions of this original picture and then we'll supply the rotation parameters. Here, uh, we actually choose the size of the work groups uh, we uh, now say we want to um, perform this kernel functions on the whole image. So the global size is really the size of the image, uh, width and height. And then for the work group size, uh, we choose 16 and 16 uh, on both of these two dimensions, on both of these two dimensions. So we know that each work group has 16 by 16 work items. Then we're going to run the kernel by calling in, in by calling in queue ND range kernel, um, providing the kernel object and the uh, parameters uh, that we need to uh, instantiate the kernel. Essentially, the global workgroup size and local workgroup size. Once the kernel is completed, we'll read the results back to the host. So we'll have an in queue read buffer to read the um, 
content or the new image from the um, buffer on the device to the uh, buffer on the host.